doing it. Okay, cool. <laughs> We're live. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to the nightlight. And um, wish we could see all of your faces. Um, my name is Brittany. I'm artistic director of the Nightlight Cinema, and I'm happy um, to present um, not only my show leader, Anthony Crislip, um, director Lynn Q. A Young. Um, she's director of Nowhere, and uh, her short is part of Our Right to Gaze, um, Black Film Identities, um, brought to us by our friends at Full Spectrum Features, Chicago Northwest Film Forum in Seattle, um, and the Luminal Theater and Circle Collective, both in New York City, as a means of addressing system systemic inequity in the film industry. So welcome, mm -hmm. Lynn. Um, really happy to have you here. A pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. So I'm going to pop out, and Anthony's going to be asking these questions sure. for you. So okay. A bit. Okay, so we can get started here. Uh, thank you again so much, Lynn, for joining us. Uh, I just thought... Uh, for starters, um, just if you could talk a little bit about, um, you know, talk about Lynn, talk about yourself, uh, <laughs> how, you know, how you got here, how you got to making this film. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I came from the music industry, which um, I felt like music saved my life in so many ways. I Music like just had, I, it just gave me this insight, I think, that I didn't have before it, before I was connected to it. And this was in my like my teenage years. Um, and I was lucky enough to get into the music industry uh, through hip hop. Um, hip hop at the time was just so authentic and it was just like a pulse of the street. And um, and it, it was, we had like such a buffet. Um, it was so many different types of styles and stuff like that. And, um, it was just an incredible experience. And after some time, I just felt like, I just felt like there, like I didn't feel a place anymore in hip hop. Like it just felt like being a woman, um, there was just a certain type of vibe that was going to mainstream or that the record companies were looking for. And and I just realized that, it, you know, I was more so, really about lyricism. Um, I was, uh, you know, focused on like, you know, just bringing something different, bringing something original to people. And it just, I mean, I've had three major record deals and it still felt like I didn't get to where I wanted to be. And I just said, you know, I just feel like I need to change my medium. And I, I really, I, I looked forward to one day going from in front of the camera to behind the camera, but I, I kind of did it when I did it, like, it just took me a while. Like I, it just took me a while to actually realize that I have to, it's about me being behind the camera. And once I realized that I, I wanted to, I wanted to go back to school because everything that I had learned thus far, I've taught myself when it came to hip hop. And I learned the business the hard way, you know? And I wanted to kind of feel the confidence of going back to school and learning it. I just didn't know that I would be you know, also trying to go get my master's and uh, reaching, you know, for the stars with that. And, you know, getting into NYU to School of the Arts was such a major uh, thing for me um, and put me in the in a, in a space where I was, you know, connecting with people from all over the country, filmmakers from all over the country and our professors of filmmakers from so many different places. So, um the, the, that's the long story. You know, the short story is I'm this, I'm a person that just like thrives on being creative. And I love to, I love all kinds of mediums that allows me to be that, be that way and allows me to reach people and have conversations like this with people. Okay. Yeah, no, it's like when I was like the thing where I was like, I saw the film and I'm like, oh, it's like really interesting. And then, you know, I read, <laughs> I literally like typed in your name on Google to see like what was up there. And it's like, oh yeah, she had three major record deals, and you know, she's been in the spotlight since the '90s. And yeah. I think I think it's it's incredible because, like the, I guess like the confidence and um, the courage it takes to, you know, say at some point like, I you know discovered my passion. Um, you know, I want to work in film, and you know you have these major record deals, but it also like watch your film isn't like a mainstream kind mm -hmm. of. It's not exactly. <laughs> oh, so if you want to talk a little bit more about nowhere, um, you can. 
Sure, sure. Um, Nowhere was actually my third year film at Tisch. Um, I just recently graduated. Well, recent because last year was like, I don't know what that was, <laughs> but I graduated in May of last year virtually. Um, uh, but Nowhere was my third year film. Um, it was a particular course which allowed us to collaborate with other Tisch floors. So I had a Tisch costume designer. I had a Tisch production designer. I had um, Tisch cinematographers and also Tisch grad acting. So I'm talking about grad, so graduate school. Hmm. Um, so it was just insane to kind of collaborate with the same type of dynamics that you would in a studio film. And you're also collaborating with people that you are kind of connected to or not already because it, it, the grad acting, they don't let us see them until third year. <laughs> Um, and they, and everybody in Tish has a very rigorous, intense co it's program. It's just intense. Like you're always creating something. So it was a beautiful thing to do, to be able to have that, to, um, to create something with this incredible team. But it was also in the midst of like, uh, I think like Harvey Weinstein happened in the latter part of 2017, 2017. And this film was, was, completed in March of 2018. So what really kind of was on my mind at the time was just, I was just intrigued by power dynamics and relationships. And I mean, it happens like it happens in our relationships, whether it's with our families, whether it's with our significant others, whether it's with our, our friends, there are these power dynamics. And what was happening with um, Harvey Weinstein was that we were, we were, I mean, this is nothing new to us, just being born women in this world globally, you know, this is just part of, you know, what, not necessarily what we, well, I'll speak for myself, what I was used to, but we're aware of all of the bias and all of the repression and oppression and suppression and um, sexism and misogyny. And, but this was like putting a direct face to it. You know what I mean? And not that it wasn't hasn't been done this war, but on this type of magnitude, it was it was huge. And it was in the industry that I am going into. Right. Yeah. I you know, I was I think I'd been graduated from college for about a year at that time and I studied media and you know, I had all these yeah. female friends who, you know, again, it's you're aware of it and you hear like stories about it, but to have all of these stories just be like coming out and realizing just how entrenched it is at every level was baffling yeah. and yeah. scary. And I mean, that, that truly inspired nowhere. I wanted to um, juxtapose the relationship that Esther had with her husband, which was abusive, you know, mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person that loves to bring like the subsets of people that, that we really don't know about. Right. The, 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 so I went to the, I went to like research the BDSM community, you know what I mean? Because there are power dynamics in that. Right. But mm -hmm. you're kind of sign up for those power dynamics as opposed to being in a relationship where society, you know, is kind of teaching you these power dynamics ever since you're like, an embryo, <laughs> you kind of feel it in the womb and then you come out and here you are. Um, so I wanted to kind of have that juxtapositioning to kind of shed light on just, you know, the tra traditional gender roles in society as opposed to a world where gender politics or uh, power dynamics is not, it's, it's, it's actually turned on its head. You know what I mean? It's actually consent. And, um, you know, th that's what really inspired me and kind of drove drove me to to create a film like this. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, it does definitely interesting because you go from this very direct style where you're, you're very tight on like all the actors like faces and it's all very mm -hmm. muted. And then, you know, from there she goes into the night and discovers this this world. And I really, I, I thought her interactions with, um, I, I guess, the, the man in the... Lennon, well, yep. Yeah, I thought that was really fascinating because, you know, she she literally asks him, like, like why are you doing this? And it's because it's almost like when you're, when you're trained with those ideas in your head, you can't imagine ever voluntarily consenting exactly. to that kind of play. Mm -hmm. so 
I, I thought that was really, really fascinating. Thank you. Um, how did uh, the uh, program, All Right to Gaze, come up to you and how they reach out to you? Well, you know, the beauty of being at Tish is that we, we get to kind of sit side by side with incredible colleagues and also incredible professors. And one of my colleagues that I went to school with had actually um, talked to Brian, it was either Brian, I think, uh, I think it was Brian, um, and they reached out to me. They already kind of knew about Nowhere, um, but they wanted to see it. So it still was in the preliminary stage. Uh, it wasn't accepted yet. It wasn't selected yet, but they were interested in seeing it and taking it from there. Um, so I sent them my stuff and they got back to me and gave me the great news that it was selected and how, you know, they, they told me what they were about, which I was always, I mean, I was just intrigued with off the bat. Um, just what, you know, what just showing, uh, black filmmakers, LGBTQ, you know, queer black filmmakers and having this, like a whole showcase on it. It's kind of amazing. And it's just an honor to be a part of it. Yeah, and that's that's one of the really cool things about the whole selection is, you know, it's all these very looks at, you know, black American life and, you know, sexuality, which especially in mainstream film, like we're still not really at a point where, um, you know, queerness or really, you know, artists of color, like get to that kind of, not even representation, but like that level of like power where they can really express something like this. Yep. Um, so that's, that's another thing that I like was like all the films in the program are, they're kind of subversive in a mm -hmm. way. Right. <laughs> and I think your film is in a way, definitely like a standout as far as that goes, because, you know, I, I actually want to like talk to you, like when, cause you said you were collaborating with other floors of Tish, mm -hmm. um, were the original like plans as far as like the style of the film, um, were those in, did you have those in mind when you began it or did you collaborate with them, with other people who were involved and uh, figure it out from there? I mean, I had, I definitely had a certain look in mind. What's beautiful about collaborating with other artists is that they take, you know, we all kind of, we have, we all come with our ideas and it just elevates, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, just the cinematographer, Prashant, um, he um, just incredible with lighting when it came to this world. You know what I mean? Just because you have these kind of like earth tones and these kind of yellowish vibes to kind of <laughs> to kind of like um, reflect her home life, right? And then she goes into this incredibly and colorful world that still has a very kind of um, certain kind of vibe to it. You know what I mean? And I, I loved what he did with that. You know what I mean? I, I I did a lot of research. I do a lot of research, but I think it was so important to to tell people, okay, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking, uh, this is what I see, but then they take it, they take what I see and then give me even more than that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just amazing collaborating with everyone. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was just really struck by the colors of it. And like, you know, in a way, I think the first thing that comes to mind when I think of, you know, this film set in New York where, you know, this person in a troubled marriage, in this case, she's abused, but um, it then walks out and kind of goes on this sexual odyssey. Like, obviously, it reminds me of, you know, like, Eyes Wide Shut, but... Ah, okay. Uh, I'll take that but, one. <laughs> I, I mean, besides that, I just thought it was like this, in, you know, this really just well done piece. And, um, you. you know, now that you've, you're out of Tish, uh, you're a graduate officially. Um, yes. And uh, do you have any more, or you have more projects in the mind? I think you said Nowhere was from 2018. That's from 2018. I actually worked on my thesis. My thesis is a, is just about to hit the film festival circuit. It's called Cracked. Um, I received the Spike Lee production fund for that. So it's amazing. Um, he's a mentor over at Tish anyway, uh, creative advisor and mentor. Uh, incredible, incredible guy, incredible filmmaker. Um, so he helped me make this film. And I also, this was like the biggest film. I, you know, I'm a, one of the things that I learned from the music industry is production. So I've had like three, um, well, I had two production companies in the music industry, one of which was uh, with MC Light. 
uh, both of them were with MC Light actually. So Light actually taught me a lot of about uh, about what product, the business side of, you know, I was always just like, I, you know, I can do this stuff for free. You know, I love it. This is like amazing. But she taught me the business side of it. So I have a business right now uh, that I launched right after I graduated. I knew what I wanted to do. This was something I wanted to do when I went to grad school. It's called Illusionary Ends. Um, and my first, my thesis film was in conjunction with the, with the Spike Lee Production Fund. Uh, we made it together. We produced it together. And um, it's starring Tatum Marilyn Hall. It's starring Malachi Hurd. It's the biggest film I've ever done. Um, the biggest um, budget, the biggest, uh, the largest amount of, you know, cast and crew. Um, it, but it was an incredible, amazing experience. So I look forward for you guys to see that uh, coming up soon. Yeah, I, I look forward to it too. Um, yeah, I, I knew I, I knew Spike Lee was like a professor, or I think he was a professor. I don't know if he still is at NYU. Um, he might be on hiatus now that he is like, I mean, a lot of, you know, Casey Lemons is also a professor at NYU, hmm. you know, and we have a lot of professors that are, you know, she did Harriet. She's working on other stuff as well. She's worked on stuff after that. And we have Amy Fox, who's now uh, writing on the Connors in LA. So our professors are like really making things happen. But Spike has been incredible, incredible in this journey. No, that's great to hear because um, I think you were, uh, you showed up on He Got Game. Oh, wow. You did your homework, Anthony. <laughs> How do you know? Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep, I'm not gonna sleep on your research. I saw it and I'm like, oh yeah, I love you, Game because. Just... <laughs> wow. Yes, I did. Um, I that was like I think it was my either my first time having lines in a film. So I started as I see I love I started as acting actually before I even got into the music industry. It was all about acting. Um, so he actually gave me my first lines. <laughs> yeah. Years later, it's like. It's incredible, you know what I mean? Like it's just incredible how life happens like that. And um, you know, talking about uh, your, this film that you recently made for your thesis. Yes. Like, uh, I'm. I mean, are you like excited to like, be given? You know, hopefully you'll be given bigger budgets. Um, you know, continue. Absolutely. To create, um, <laughs> yeah, to continue. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's. I mean, honestly, um. You know, I'm all for like I believe in uh, sharpening my tools at all times. I believe this is a craft, and I I just uh, directed a film called But Tomorrow with the Gates Preserve and Bucktown USA Entertainment. Um, I'm actually shooting something Saturday. I'm directing it, um, and I've directed B sides. I'm directing a TV series called Zeta Please. So I've been working on a number of things, um, but what I am working toward is a feature. Um, so I look forward to that and I have a feature, um, that I have been working on, but I'm going, I don't, I think it's probably going to be my second because of the budget that I need for it. Um, uh, but I'm going to be work, starting to work on my, um, my new feature script. Cause that's like the next plateau. Yeah, that's, um, that's great. Cause it's like, it's such a, I don't know, such a major evolution, I guess, to go from, you know, you go yes. into film school, you're working on these films of like, this group of collaborators, and then now, like you're you're on your own, and you just have to keep yes. you have to keep working. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, we're all. I mean, we're all really excited to see like where it goes from here. And um, Thank you. yeah, I think uh, this. I mean, this is my only film I've seen of yours so far, so I need to see um, right. the whole the whole collection. But it is it is great because it sounds like you were able to be, you know, fostered in this community of artists mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I think right now in lieu of all that has transpired in, in 2020, um, not just, I mean, the fact that, you know, COVID kind of started it off and um, we're all like shut down in our homes, right? And what, what can we do but watch TV and watch our phones <laughs> and talk and like, pl I, like I got into planting, I got into gardening, which saved my life. Like that saved my life. <laughs> Do you identify Anthony? <laughs> yeah, not gardening specific. My roommates, they all, they, they made a bucket garden. So we, ah. we had that. Um, one of my roommates, you know, she grew like jalapenos and like, uh, 
yeah, basil. So it's been it's been great. Yeah. And in a way, there there's almost been this clarifying effect with COVID where you know suddenly we can you know we aren't as surrounded by everything all the time. Right. We had this you know moment where we could look at like oh yeah let's all get into gardening and like everyone <laughs> know has plants now and yes. <laughs> It's, it, everyone's trying to, it's almost like we want to have a more tactile existence because we're spending so much time on Zoom and on our computer yes. that, and you know, we're not going out to the movies, so everything's on our TV or on our computer yes. or on the phone. and, um, you know, wanting something more tactile out of that. So mm -hmm. um, I started cooking more, like going back to like actual cooking food. Like, you know, I forgot, like I, we cook, like I always cook, but like now, like being more like, you know, I'm creative with it. Hi. Hi, Brittany. <laughs> like I'm coming in the conversation where you guys are talking about cooking and gardening. And yes. I'm like, that's what I've been doing. Like, this is third time <laughs> as well, because not only are we reconnecting with like stuff that I, I guess we were more or less supposed to be doing. Obviously, no we got a comment no um, from Miriam Bennett, who's also on the board of the Nightlight. She just picked up a plant on the way home. <laughs> My room is covered in it. And like, I, keep on trying to find places for them. Absolutely. Um, but this, like, I think COVID has also been giving us this chance to, you know, mediate on these things or meditate on them. Maybe Absolutely. it's a different word. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, not only with our, like, the films that are coming into view and same with my programming, it's like giving a chance to add like these different voices in, in a way that um, I haven't been able to think before. So, not that I haven't, but it's more or less like now it's like a real time to focus in on like, you know, getting like the word out and local filmmakers into the into the mix. Right. Um, which I wanted to open this up to um, our audience. Um, we might have I think we have one person right now, but um, <laughs> or it's not that um, I could probably like come up with a question as well. Um, well, can I, I can I tell you what Cracked is actually about? Because that's one thing I sure. forgot to tell you, because it's based on a true story. It's based on my childhood, actually. Um, and it's about, so I'm just going to say this. So it, it, it like asked the question, what does like falling in love for the first time? So it's a, it's a coming of age story. So what does coming, uh, what does falling in love for the first time look like when you've been sexually abused? Oh yeah. So I already know, like, it's like, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a story that's, it's actually very deep, but it also. It also, I, I'm hoping what it will do is shed light on, on the lasting effects of sexual abuse. Because I, I mean, this is in lieu of, of um, also nowhere to a degree of mm -hmm. just like the, 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 the nature of abuse and how it affects. And, 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 when it, and, when, and when we're talking about children, there's just long lasting effects because um, of, of you know, you, you kind of stunt the growth, the emotional growth. And mm -hmm. um, so, so yes. So I just wanted to say if that was about. No, that's uh, great. I mean, like um, we, I think a, a lot of things in regards to, you know, talking about those topics and abuse and all of that and the mental effects of trauma. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like seeping through like all, all different things in their life. And, you know, mm -hmm. even if it means like starting a new relationship, you might not, you know, deal with certain things that you, or you might not have like guessed what, like, I guess more or less like you're dealing with the trauma in ways that you never thought it changed. It would have changed you and right. bring up to a new um, start, a new relationship, a new friendship, anything like that. Um, yeah. It has its lingering effects. And I yeah. think people don't talk about it enough. So true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know I have these like crazy deep, um, <laughs> <laughs> these crazy deep like um, films that I make, but I do my TV, one of the TV series, Zeta Please, that I'm doing is a comedy. <laughs> so there's that. Okay. It's changed. It's good to have the balance. Yes. I did think Nowhere, I mean, it had some comedic elements in a way because it was sort of a fish out of water story. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I can see that. Are you saying like when once she once she arrived in this place, it was like just her response and yeah, because it's like it's almost like she walks in, you know, she stumbles into this like Technicolor Fantasia, <laughs> and 
on, on one hand, it's 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 really it's played really sensitively, and it's kind of sad because you know she she's you know traumatized and mm -hmm. she's in this horrible abusive relationship. But she has this uh, line when she's you know puking in the toilet, <laughs> and the gentleman's holding her hair, and she says, you know, my husband never did that in fifteen years, and it, something about like you know, the premise and her location. Like, it is funny in a way, but it's also this really heartbreaking line. Yeah. yeah. I actually had her, I, I don't know if you realize it, but my crazy mind, I actually had her vomit in a urinal. Wow. <laughs> Brittany's like, wow. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, I just wanted to kind of really like symbolically play on these these this this whatever's labeled masculine and feminine and and just like these gender just really play with gender in that way um and kind of in many ways poke poke fun so to speak at certain things but also see the seriousness in them you know at yeah. the same time yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i think it it's a really powerful piece uh, in multiple ways for that so thank you yeah thank you thank you thank you yeah I think uh, you said you had a question. Oh yeah, well, it's kind of I know um since I'm like kind of in <laughs> I'm not very uh, like on live things cuz I'm just like, oh, I don't like people are watching. I got to keep talking and like <laughs> then I get all mixed up in my words and I'm just like, what is this? Um you know, I you mentioned you have very uh like a lot of different um influences yes. um, in your statement and bio for our right to gaze. I'm a huge Kubrick fan, um, oh, yeah. and I mean, I just, I, I know Anthony knows this. I think we both <laughs> are like, um, and I mean, I love Chloe Zhao as well, and, and we yes. should ride her here, and that it was beautiful. Ooh. And now she's got Nomadland out. Yeah. Um, it seems like you have like a wide range of um, influences. Um, could you explain like how that kind of um, plays to your, um, I guess, like the work you make or the the stuff that you're doing now? Sure. I guess. Sure, um, sure, sure. That's I think I, I probably what's the main thing that kind of runs through all of those people is a level of detail. It's like they're just so detail oriented, you know, and and the detail of Kubrick with just symmetry is just insanity. And we're not even talking about story content. We're not even talking. We're just talking about visuals. Like it's just insanity. Like. Um, and the storylines, like I love, I guess one thing, what, what I love most is versatility yeah. um, because I don't want to be pigeonholed. I don't want to be considered, you know, uh, a black filmmaker. I don't want to be considered a woman filmmaker. I don't want to be considered the queer filmmaker. I just want to be a filmmaker. Like when you speak about, you know, <laughs> when I think about the fact that 90 something percent of everything that I've seen in my life has come through the gaze of a white male. It makes me realize, it's not that we say, oh, we just call it film. We don't say white film. Oh, he's a white filmmaker. We don't say that, you know? <laughs> so the versatility of like a Kubrick, the versatility of a, a, like Chloe to me, she's just- A filmmaker. Her level of boldness when it comes to a slow burn is incredible to me. But the way she casts her films are incredible to me. Um, it it feels like it's not a film. For me, it feels like some type of like hybrid between a doc and it, it's just it's just like I'm like looking, I'm like sitting there and I'm looking at somebody's life. I'm not supposed to be there, but I'm just like enthralled in it, you know? And it's it's so it's so deliberate. And to have the balls to be to like have things move very slowly is just like, you know what I mean? It's so easy to kind of have that wow factor and have these intense scenes that are like compelling like this. But like, how do you create a quiet film that makes such an impact? And so I just, I can't wait to see what she does with Eternals. Like, I just can't even fathom it. And you know, she's talking about how it's, uh, cause she's a, a manga fan. Mm -hmm. So, She's talking about like seeing it from a whole different, it, like, <laughs> wow. Because she's yeah. saying, like she's yeah. that's like a you know, manga, and they're supposed to be like um, scenes that are inspired by Bollywood and like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I want to do some stuff, yeah. 
It's great. So I can't even, I can't even imagine. Um, but when, when I think of a, a, a versatile, the versatility that I want, I want to be able to be like a Fincher who can do seven, but can also do Benjamin Button mm -hmm. without no, with nobody saying a word, like, because both of them are dope, like both of them are crazy dope. You know, and they're two different veins. And I feel like what happens in, and especially in, I mean, what was happening before we even got to Hollywood, right? Before black people even got to Hollywood is this notion of like, oh, you're a comedy filmmaker. You do comedy. Oh, no, 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 you do horror. You're a horror filmmaker. Okay, you you do horror. Oh, you do drama very well. That's great. And, and you know, having this subset of like, you know, this, the, the, you know, people are calling this like a black renaissance in film right now. It's like a black renaissance, um, but it's just so important to not, for me anyway, and I don't do that with actors. Like I'll take a comedian any day and say, yo, I want you to do a dramatic role. Like that's what I believe in because what are you gonna do comedy for the rest of your life? Like Steve Carell, I'm like, go ahead boy, like go ahead. <laughs> Cause he's an incredible actor, you know? And a lot of actors get pigeonholed because they get typecasted to be a certain thing. I just don't want to be that director either. I'm, I'm a versatile filmmaker. I can make horror films. I can make psychological thrillers. I can make comedies. I can make dramas. I can make whatever, whatever. Like I have a lot of experiences. So it depends on the story you want to tell. And what yes. It's important. And right. that's why we're so lucky to have this um, as part of, as nowhere, um, you know, played in our virtual screening room. So Incredible. thank you so much, Lynn, for spending your time with us on of our course. first live stream. You were wonderful. And I love to you guys. Movie. First live stream. Thank you. This is <laughs> great. Look, yes. Woo! <laughs> we look forward to having more of these. Um, and hopefully, like, we can, you know, st stay in touch together as, you know, Absolutely. you're on your filmmaking. I'm following program. you guys. I'm following you guys. Oh, can I, can I give my Instagram? I don't know if anybody. But yeah. I'm following you guys. I'm following you guys. So please follow me. Oh, and I feel you right back. So I'm excited. Thank you so much. And um, we will see you soon. Okay. All right. Bye, Take everybody. Care.